Some of what I'll be talking about is really the fear of aging, the fear of the night, the fear of death, and the opportunities, obviously, for recreating oneself, for creativity, for the imagination, for all the things we'll be talking about. But I think both sides of that polarities really need to work together all the time, and we shouldn't forget one or the other. We would start the same way every week with a circle. It's archetypal, even as dance therapy. I learned the importance of the circle. People make eye contact. There's a periphery and a center. Um, and you're making a strong container to hold the energy. So actually transformation can happen in the center of the circle. You're building rhythm and energy and things start shifting in the circle and connections start happening. Encouraging emotion and sharing. We were integrating sensory experiences. The ball is a physical um, mobilizer. You pull all the senses together. So this is about integration and multimodal, which we'll talk about, but not functional, the expressive part, with imagination, with story, with music, all of that is sort of behind the work. We played sad music one time, and suddenly she began talking about missing the woods in New Hampshire, her childhood, um, walking in the, and she was kind of crying, but it evoked a lot of emotion and sharing in the group. Of course, not just happy times. So the relationship is very important, and using all the senses is very important, and developing the stories over time is very important. And people really become problems or numbers or objects or to an overworked staff. And to humanize that, to have one person to come and just to listen is really extraordinary. Art is learning to see differently. Art is a way of seeing and being, not as an object, not as a piece of paper, not as a crayon. Not as, it's a way of seeing in the world and seeing the art and spirit in everyday moment. Um, and when you're working with people with diminished faculties, how to create art there, how to create symbol, how to create expression. So she had this cup still, and her life was down to what was in front of her. And to take the cup away, of course, took away what, the last that she had left. So I asked myself, what is the meaning of the objects? And then how do you, so I'm seeing it through kind of mythical eyes, that this is a little altar in front of her and the, the sacred meaning of these objects, but obviously I'm not going to say that to the nursing staff. So I think the other um, task we have is to be translators. You see things with a poetic eye and you speak the language of function if you have to, and really have to be skilled at crossing dimensions in that way. I said the cup is important to her, why don't you just leave it? She'll be fine, and she was fine. She had her cup and she was fine. I wrote my dissertation on kinesthetic imagining uh, as language is a text that has symbol, metaphor, ritual in the way we move. So again, this is not functional movement like I'm picking up a cup. This is expressive movement, which like poem is different than discursive language. Poetic movement is different than functional everyday movement. And it carries the same sort of emotional load that a poem carries. It's condensed symbolic language. I was in a yoga class the other day, and the, it's interesting because the focus is just the opposite. It's like raise the arm and the leg, trying to teach us to be objective about our bodies and not be so personal about them. So here, it's raise my arm, my leg. There's different qualities when you use the imagination to move. So it's not coming from an ego, which triggers a lot of fear. So we used to work with, with exercises like um, in a group, kind of kick and raise your legs, and there's a lot of anxiety about I can't, and it brings back painful memories. But if you're kicking a ball around the group, and, you ha and I used to notice that you, could, you happen to kick further or move more if you're not focused on I am the one doing it or can't do it or all the stories that you've come to believe about what you can and can't do, use imagery to move. In one group in the nursing homes, you may know this, um, the staff watered the plants in the room. In the other room, the residents watered their own plants. Sure enough, the health was better in the second room. And it's really about bringing consciousness awareness to every action. I had a yellow sheet of paper and I would write notes. And then I would carefully take that yellow pad of paper and put it in a file and put it away. And he would see me take it out put it away, write in it. So the holding of his information, I began to understand that it was the holding that was as important as what we wrote. The decline of the body and aging, this is what I was going to do today, brings, may bring depression and grief over loss of function, expression, and sense of self. Leading a structured movement group for the elderly that can use rhythm, imagination, simple movements, and props 
can aid dialogue, interaction, support, expression of feelings, and dealing with the existential issues of mortality, control, aloneness, and meaning. Well, this is from a group that I did for women with breast cancer. You can see there where her mastectomy happened. Using all the senses, again, feeling, touching. I used to use uh, those Indian bells, those little bracelets and anklets and things, so that somebody who feels invisible, when you hear yourself making a sound, there's a sense of self again. I'm here. I'm heard. Coming to terms with this body is never going to go back to what it used to be, and really accepting that is not easy for any of us. When the earthquake happened in 89, I was, um, my office is on Union Street, and I started to volunteer at the shelter, at the marina. I started to record the stories. There was such resiliency in the room, such wonderful stories. Eventually, um, I had a dissertation student working with me, and we transcribed the stories and looked for themes of survivorship and resiliency in these people. Now, they were told, you've got 15 minutes to go into your home you've lived in your whole life, pull out what's important, and then we're coordinating it off, and you can never go back in. And there they were in the gymnasium in a public place, no privacy, having to change clothes, having to sleep in a room with strangers for days and days, not knowing if they can contact relatives, if they can ever get back in their houses with only what they've been able to pull out in 15 minutes. your eyes closed and just notice what comes up memories when you first heard it what was going on how does it speak to you find somebody near you and just share your memories you'll have three four minutes to do this close your eyes and just debrief by yourself your own emotions the other person's stories Had we played that music and given her the opportunity, it's like it's the supporting people and then, like you said, validating. So I think it's just beautiful and I really hope more care facilities do mm -hmm. things like that because it's inc incredibly empowering, I'm imagining. Thank you. I bet he, he played some tracks for me that he was trying to like turn me on to music, you know? And I, and I was like going, yeah, that, that's okay, you know, it's all right. But now, you know, I'm 57, I really appreciate that music, you know? I, it's not my music, it's not part of my generation. I'm a deadhead, you know? But, you know, but he taught me that it doesn't mean a thing if it doesn't have that swing, you know? So. When I heard that music, it made me think of the idea of just doing whatever it is that strikes our fancy because we can. We're going to toss balloons. Just toss them out. Try not to let them hit the ground. Let's keep them up and let's see if we can get them to the back of the room. facing who knows what's going to happen with the health care system and Medicare and what's going to happen to us as we age. It just has to do with a, an attitude toward aging that doesn't um, fix symptoms or focus on the limitations. That focuses on possibilities and keeps us full of life. We're almost there, all the way to the back. <laughs> Last one, two. 